The following presentation was recorded live at Color Lab's 20th Annual Convention. This is tape number nine, Working with Music. Other people. Shortly, um, I just kind of want to do a little outline for you, and we do have pass outs here at the end that you can uh, to get. Um, before we start, practice has always been something that most of us have avoided because we don't have the time. Or we'll grab a record that we've done a year ago, and usually, well, that's about as much practice as we can do. We all do it. I do it. Uh, practice is something that we should do. It's a sure way of looking good at a dance when you know your music. If you sound good, you look good, you do a good dance, the dancers will have a good experience, and they'll dance good. Um, one of the things that we'll probably explore with our panelists is um, the right music picking out music for you. I'm sure they will elaborate it more on it. Finding the right music for the right time, for the right dance, like uh, making sure you know that level of the floor. That's part of the music. Uh. The other thing is the occasion or holiday of the dance. I don't know how many of you uh, this um, St. Patrick's holiday forgot your St. Patrick records on purpose. Uh, I did this year, and I did like four dances in a row, and I didn't have it in the box. And I think it's kind of, you better plan and have it there, even though you may not want to keep doing that kind of thing. But you should know what the holiday is or what the theme of a dance is. Um, the other thing I want to cover is something that I've asked callers over, I don't know how many years, just friends, how do they pick a record out? How do you know which one you want? How do you pick it out? And uh, well over a hundred callers, I don't know how many, and it all came that they uh, hear a title of a song and they recognize it's in the top 40. That was the most uh, the callers say, oh yeah, I, that one's on the radio now. That's That was one thing. It's on the charts. The other, uh, almost running even with the popularity of the top 40 country was they have a particular label that they like. It's good for them. No matter what they put out, It's that label is the one they're going to buy, no matter what. The other, the third, is it's in their key. There are some callers that will sacrifice a particular song because it's in their key. And a lot of our lady callers uh, that can't make an adjustment to some of the songs that don't fit them have sacrificed songs to find one for their key. Um, so that is one way. Another way, it has a good, believe it or not, sounds like the old bandstand time. A lot of callers say, so if it has a good beat, if it's lively and has a good beat, no matter what the song is, that's what they're going to do. The other is unusual music. Choosing and listening to music, well, there's many ways. You know, there are tape services. There are callers that come through your town. There's uh, uh, the Square Dance magazine. Uh, there's all kinds of ways of hearing new songs or even asking your, da uh, your dealer what's new. The last thing I wanted to cover is picking the music. And I know a lot of you have heard this a hundred times and I'm going to say it again and that is that always listen to the instrumental side. I don't care if you've heard the song or not. When you play it, you listen to it, do you like the music? Fine. Sing along. Well, I don't know the song. Well, that's all right. Try to find the low key, the lowest note, and if it fits comfortable, good. Find the highest one fits comfortable. You're half, you're, you're part way through there. How's the melody line? Is it simple? Is it there? Can you follow it? How about phrasing? Can you go along with it? Does it sound good to you? And then, of course, recognizing the song. If all of those meet that standard of yours, then flip it over and listen to the call side. Some callers don't even listen to the call side. If the song is that good, they know it. They pick it up, play it, and away they go. Um, it's called subliminal suggestion. I'm sure a lot of you have heard that something blinking on a screen once and off, uh, for some reason, you go out and you buy what you don't need. And uh, that is part of it. But only we do it with our ears. There could be something in a piece of music that tells you, you know, that's not good. Or the, the caller turns you off or, or he turns you on. You end up buying the record, and the next thing you know, uh, you can't do it like him. You shouldn't try, but you can't do it like him. So listen to the call side first. That would be my suggestion. Now we're going to get to the panelists, and um, we're going to introduce the first one to you. And I had each one of them write something down. This caller, 
says that he's a male. So I made sure that he wrote that down so you could guess which one it is. He's from Largo, Florida. He's got a wife and two children. He's been calling for 22 years. He records for Hi-Hat Records. He is the baritone with the Pioneers. And let's have a nice hand for Mr. Tom Perry. I didn't say a word. Didn't say a word. I want to talk a little bit about, I'm going to be dealing exclusively for my part with singing calls. I want to talk a little bit about a thing that I call the comfort zone, and it, as it refers to the caller. You need to stay in your comfort zone, which means you're comfortable with the song you're doing, you're comfortable with where you are in the song, you're not lost, you feel good about how high it goes, how low it goes. And a lot of times you you get a little nervous when you get into a singing call or if you get a two words behind, like a certain record producer that I know and have recorded for for about 15 years. <laughs> See, he chose to sit back there by himself where nobody would notice he's here. <laughs> Why do you need to be in a comfort zone? The one thing that you've got to remember always, always, no matter what part of this activity you're dealing with, and uh, there are some people who will dispute this, but I will dispute it until the day I die, and that is this. A square dance caller, if he is successful, is first an entertainer. He must be an entertainer. We are in the entertainment business. This means that you have to be confident in what you're doing, and to be confident, you, in order to be comfortable, you have to be confident. So one follows the other. I want to touch on just a few things that um, will help you get into that comfort zone, and I'm sure some of the other fellows will, will expand on some of them. Preliminaries, uh, Jack has already mentioned the uh, key. Make sure that the records that you're using are in the right key. Even more important than the right key is the range. There are some songs that have a range like this, and you can put them in any key and still sing them. And then there are some songs I couldn't do, no matter, Danny Boy. <laughs> I don't care what key it's in, I can't sing Danny Boy. The range is too great. Be comfortable with the range. Be happy with that. The setup of the sound equipment, bass and treble, must be set correctly. And we tend to go both to both extremes on that. Some put too much bass. I've been guilty of that myself because I like to hear the boom and the fullness of the bass. When you get too much of it, the callers can't understand what you're saying, and that's a problem. It's okay if you're singing rock and roll music, but not if you're calling square dances. The other end of it is some callers get it so tinny that it just hurts your ears, literally hurts your ears. And they say it's because I want to be clear. Well, you've got to be clear, but you've also got to be an entertainer. Relative volumes between the music and the voice must also be just right and for the same kind of reasons. It's got to be loud enough for you to hear it or you're going to go get two, two notes behind and there you are. But it's got to be soft enough that the, that the dancers can hear your, your figures. How do we get uncomfortable? If you're a memory caller, one of the ways that you get uncomfortable is that you worry that you may forget one call somewhere in the middle of your figure and lo and behold you end up someplace that you're not supposed to be. I guess you're, right, you're where you're supposed to be but the answers aren't. So that's one way that you get uncomfortable. If you're a sight caller and you're playing around and you're stretching yourself a little bit, which I believe you should be doing, uh, you're a little bit concerned in the back of your mind you have a deadline, and you know you have a deadline, and you're a little worried about making that deadline. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? You know you got to get them to the corner and get them home in a certain length of time to start the next verse, and you get a little concerned about that. And the third reason is for anybody, you've lost your place. You're two notes behind. Or you're going along, and suddenly, and you, you daydream for a minute, and suddenly you say, 
did I just do three figures in a row? What do I do now? Talk about the music. The song itself, and this will help you to, there are some things that you can know about the music that will help you to find your place. We're just going to talk about three different kinds, and I brought three records along here to use, to use as uh, demo records. We talk about we talk about singing call having seven segments in it, and for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to say three of them are choruses. That's the opener, middle break, and a closure. And the four of them are verses, and that's the four figures. That relates more to music musically to what uh, musicians talk about. There are some songs like this one that have a situation where the choruses are a different tune from the verses. This is a record that's uh, it's on. Uh, it's uh, it's hi hat. Recorded uh, by uh, recorded by somebody on hi hat. <laughs> Is what we're calling Yonder the chorus comes part. A sucker and Listen you've got tune. my gal, Alabama, left that corner and go. You get back home with those side dough. Left Alabama and we go to ring. And it repeats. Railroad, steam, the same thing river, river and canal. Turn through to an Alabama lift and the only thing is that you tell you that she's gone, gone, gone. So she's gone, gone, gone. I did her my last farewell. Head couple square through. Round the corner, girl. The do it outside, though. This, this is a figure. Spin chain through, girl, sir. If in the situation that I mentioned earlier they were, that you say, oh, did I just do three figures in a row? That kind of, that kind of uh, format on a record will help you to get out of it if you know what they are. Make sure you know them. There are others. This one is on ESP. Sheffield is not here with us today, and I didn't have time to get a red boot. second half of the chorus. The first half of the chorus, the second half of the chorus are two different tunes, two different sounds. Now we go to the verse and the whole thing repeats. First half of the verse. Where this helps you, hear this point right here at the end of this line. Right there is a guide point. Right there's a point that, that tells you something if you're, if you're dealing with sight calling and you're playing around. That halfway point says, start sweating it. <laughs> it's time to worry about getting out. It's time to worry about getting them to the corner and getting them home. Then you have the third kind. It's on Cardinal. And... Uh, <laughs> The reason I selected that is because this repeats the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over. This you can get lost on very easily. Good music, but you can get lost on it. For that reason, it makes an excellent hoedown. Fine. I'm not saying it's not good. 
and that you don't have a lot of help uh, in finding your, your way. If you happen to go to sleep on the microphone, it's tough to, re to recoup from that. Makes an excellent patter record. It's a Lonesome Road Blues on Cardinal. Meeting the deadline, and I, that's probably what I'm working on right now. How much time have I got? Five or six minutes? Okay. I request permission to revise and extend my remarks. <laughs> Um, meeting the deadline. If you're calling, if you're calling a, a singing call and you're doing it as a sight caller and you're not using a pre-memorized routine but you're just stressing around, and I think an awful lot of us do this. Of course, when you find a routine that works well, then that becomes a memorized routine and you use it over and over. But a lot of us do this. Well, how do you meet the deadline? If you get a little bit behind, if you do put this... If you're using a... If you're using this, and I'm going to, just, since we know all segments are the same, I'm just going to use the beginning as if it were a figure. Go ahead. Four hands you do. Go slide over the corner, make an ocean wave. And at this point, you decide, well, I forgot something. Get them in the way. Do a single hinge. Scoot back. Trade, roll, swing, and promenade, and you've got your day. Keep it simple. First of all, kind of forget the tune for a minute. Don't worry about it. In the back of your mind, you know where the song is. You know when you've got to get out, get out. A couple of things to remember that if you do get behind, and if you do get lost, there are some things that can be sacrificed. Do not hesitate to sacrifice them. Promenade can be sacrificed. Promenade two steps, you're home. That whole singing line can be sacrificed. It gives you a lot of time to work. It allows you to do gimmicks like... Uh, put that back down again for me. This is the kind of thing... That's all. If we do something like this. It's promenade... Round the ring and then side two. Look over to the heads and tell them that the caller said to go all the way around the ring. And you guys only went halfway. Go ahead, finish up. Wait, we got plenty of time. Start two. Now to right or left through. Pass through, swing and promenade her. So you wasted a whole figure, but you got out in time. That's what I mean by the comfort zone. Be comfortable that if something goes away, you can put it back together again, and you're not lost for good. Okay? Here's some of the things that work. Now, once you get to the point, that second half of the figure, where you got that warning that says, i got to get out of here, here's some things that work. I like to, I like to work with either waves or two-faced lines. And I like my key couple to be... The couple on the left end of the, of the line or the wave when viewed from the center of the set. So, for example, if you said head square through, step to an ocean wave, I would be working with man one, lady four. And I'd be, I'm just making the assumption that no, we'd, we're going to stay right within that little group of four. All corners are going to be there. Here's some things that work. Trades work. Runs and cross runs folds and cross folds. With those calls, you can manipulate dancers so easily and so quickly that even when you find yourself in deep trouble, you, you, look, you look, for example, and you say, whoops, i got to get out. I'm almost there. i got to get out. I'm in a left-hand ocean wave. <laughs> You're left-handed, do something cross, and you'll be right-handed. Gimmicks that can work well. If you say you're in, you're in this ocean wave, you got this person holding on to the corner, but you need just a little bit more time. Say center straight, twice. Swing and promenade. 
works for you, gives, them t- gives you a little bit more time, gets you back on time and with the records. Um, go back to that standard ocean wave where, you know, you have just head square through, step to an ocean wave. Uh, you do a swing through, boys trade, boys run. Now, he's standing beside the girl who is his partner. If you just need a little bit of time, just have him do a partner trade and promenade. If you need a little, little bit more time, have him do a partner trade and roll and swing and promenade. They don't have to get far from each other. Just keep them right there and work with them a little bit, and then you choose how much time to use. From an ocean wave, swing through, boys trade. We've all done this. Swing through, boys trade, turn through, alaman left, swing and promenade. comes from an old figure that's been used hundreds and hundreds of times. If you haven't that much at time, just say swing through, boys trade, girls turn back and promenade. And to make it even shorter, swing through, boys trade, girls turn back and promenade. Three steps, you're home. You can sacrifice all of those things. Sinners fold from ocean waves. Sinners fold, tap them on the shoulder and swing them, so on. Just a couple more. I won't go any more into these things, but uh, hinge and roll and swing. Anything in roll is worth a million dollars to you. Partner trade and roll. Cir- single circle to a swing. Nice little gimmick. Gives you just a little bit more time. Uh, the last thing I have to say is um, how much time have I got? I got a couple. I got a couple of minutes. Okay. How much you got now? (laughs) Thank you very much. I was going to say, don't worry about it. Any time left over will certainly be used up by you-know-who. Our next you-know-who is from Mesa, Arizona. His wife and bride is Carla. He has three children. She has two and none of their own. That's the way he wrote it. He started calling in 1957. He's the owner and producer of Rhythm Records, Board of Governors member, Let's have a nice hand for Wade Driver. All right. Thank you, Jack. Listen, you guys uh, who were in Reno in 1983, ignore the following because you're about to hear the same thing or close. Um, I am a firm believer, and it really fits in well, I think, with... Uh, this year's theme of improving the dance experience. I'm a firm believer that we control the emotions of our dancers with our singing calls and with our music in general. And not just singing calls, but the music that we use. If you play funeral dirges, they're not going to be real happy folks. Okay? If you play everything going at 136 beats a minute, they're going to be tired folks. Uh, you've got to have variety. You have to entertain. I totally agree with Tom. We are an entertainer. When I started first calling or first trying to call 35 years ago, you were a caller, and you entertained off stage, and you kept them laughing in the aisles and so on and so forth between tips, which wasn't long between tips because we didn't have round dancing, and we did three call tips. We did a patter, a singer, and a patter. And when you saved your witticisms and your wit for off stage, but today they want an entertainer because they, the dancers want someone they can relate to. They want their own version of Garth Brooks or Elvis or or, or Crystal Gale or whatever. Uh, the square dance caller is looked up to by the dancer. I hope that we uh, do our job enough to see that that continues. 
All right, but it's our job to entertain them. And for me, being inherently lazy to begin with, uh, I just let the music do all the work. And I'm going to ask a question. It's my standard question. I've asked it three or four times at different uh, music seminars and things that we've done. But I would like an honest answer. Okay, and I, and I expect to see at least a few hands this time because I've asked some of you guys this. You guys are short. I got to get up here where normal normal folks are. And no, 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 nothing intended here. But how many of you guys have bought a new record and put it on your turntable, instrumental side up, put the needle down, and listen to that record all the way through in its entirety without opening your mouth, without humming, whistling, or singing? Not many. We dearly adore the sound of our own voice. We think it's the most gorgeous thing on the very face of this earth, and we just love to hear it. But the music that we're paying now four and four fifty a copy for, uh, for that much money, I would think you'd sit and you'd listen to that thing and see if there's. To me, that's like going to Sears into the Craftsman area. Buying a box, of, a toolbox full of tools. And he said, no, this thing's full of tools. Okay, thank you very much. And you go home and you put it in your workroom. Don't open the toolbox, see what you got. You just got it there. And then something breaks in your car, so you grab your toolbox and go out there to use it. You know, they say, what are you going to use to work on? I don't know, I haven't looked in there yet, but I just thought I'd bring it along in case there's something there I could use. That's what you're doing when you don't listen to your record. You know, you got a toolbox, you have no idea what's in there you can use. And so you, you end up doing all the work yourself. All right, and I don't understand that. Okay. Now, uh, obviously some good judgment has to be used. But in, in the records that you use and that you perform, and I, I didn't go on for hours with this, and I, but I won't, Jack. Okay. But... <laughs> One of the key words is variety. Okay? Variety. Now, variety within the limits of your capability. Right? Lord only knows there's only one Jerry Story. We don't want no more. There's only one Tony Oxnard. We don't want no more. We don't need doubles. But we need new, creative, enthusiastic, energetic talent in this business to entertain and keep our dancers excited. It's a whole lot easier if you let the music work for you, and the more variety of music you have, the easier it is. Now, understand, I'm quite opinionated, and this is my opinion. You can take it what it's worth, all right? First of all, I need different rhythms, okay? Now, we've gone along, and when I first got into it, my father, bless his heart, says, you got to go, mm -bop, mm -bop, mm -chuck, mm -chuck. well, no, I disagree. Okay. Granted, that is our primary rhythm. Now, that's about as standard as we get. But even that has some brushwork with it. You hear he's just kind of peeling around those brushes. It's not a straight up boom chuck boom chuck, but it's got the two four rhythm. As long as you've got the feel, okay. Now, then you've got the hardcore country thing. But nobody says it has to be a downbeat on the kick drum and an upbeat on the snare drum. Why not use a little electric guitar? Just to assist. Variety. You gotta keep the rhythm going. Without rhythm, they're not gonna dance. Thank God for small favors. No pun intended. Okay? But you can have variety. Alright? And you can vary the way that you present that two four rhythm. Alright? That's straight two four. But notice that what the musicians in the background are doing, that changes the flavor of your song. 
You know, I, I love it when dancers come up and say, well, you're going to do a fast one or a slow one this time. And every record we got is done the same speed. Every bloody one of them's at 128, 130 beats a minute. Never changes. All right, at least it shouldn't. Not a whole lot, unless you call them for the teenagers, and that goes they square run. But, but there, but it's the mood, and I love it when dancers come up and say, "Well, you gonna do a fast one or a slow one this time?" Because I've got to be getting through to them, or they wouldn't see the difference. Okay, because the speed of Mac the knife, or Key Largo, or whatever, they're the same. They're, the, they're basically the same speed, but that that feel is different. Now, feel. And in this little handout I'm going to hand out in here, there's, it says a lot of what Jack said, and it says a lot of what Tom said, and it's going to say a lot of what Don's going to say. And something else it says in there, if you can control the emotions of the dancers on your floor, you can call anything you bloody well please, because they're going to do it, because you're in tune with them. But if you fight their emotions and you can't get them to go up and down in mood with you, you're going to lose somewhere down the line. Or at best, you'll come out neutral, and neutral dances are no fun for them. Okay? And now, when you go home at night, and I love it, and I love my wife dearly, but I go home and she says, What is a good dance tonight? <laughs> I know better than that. I know when I bomb. All right? I know when I'm neutral, and I know when I've really done my job. Okay, It would be terrific if we could have that really great feeling of, God, I did it tonight, every night. <coughs> I'll settle for once a month. You know? <laughs> and just, just give me, just say I've done my job is good enough. But you, the music will help you. Now, <clears throat> here's another new one, ESP, and a different kind of... Elmer caused that. Oh. Different kind of rhythm. Same feel. But as long as you get them that. But this lets them shake your booty a little bit. That's okay. You right? You can do too much of any of them. You know? And, I mean, this is one of the things I've always really appreciated uh, with Don. Actually, I don't really worry about Don, but I really appreciate it with Stan. Because <laughs> he's going to do it anyway. He gives you all kinds of different rhythms you can play with. That's fun. It's fun. It's fun for me. It's fun for the dancers. Okay? If I were to get up and do a calypso thing or either that little rock thing I just played, every tip, they're not going to like it. And even if you do it once, I mean, every once in a while I get up and do a new attitude, a new try and dance, and one of those dancers come up and say, I oh, throw away all them rock and roll songs. Hate those things, you know. But then you're gonna have ten others come up and say, "God, I really like that," you know. And then you're gonna put on "Faded Love," and that same old guy that came up and says he hated rock and roll says, "Now that's good stuff." And you're gonna have two couples come up and say, "God, if you ever play that again, I ain't coming back." Give them all something, you know, and and, and just and make them all happy. But listen for things. For example, and I'm not going to put that record on. I've already sold too many of Jack's records anyway. I'm going to do another one. But I have a record here. Another thing I want you to listen to, and I'm going to get off of here, are intros and tags. Listen to intros and tags. I want to... There it is. All right. I got possibly, and, and, and I'm prejudiced, granted. But I got two songs here. One has got one of the best intros, and one's got one of the best tags. Of any two songs that I've that I've ever come encounter with, I want y'all to tell me the name of this song. This is name that tune. That's all you hear. All right. Now you get lucky every once in a while. You get a song that is so recognizable, you put it on, and <clears throat> and and it's like the dancer's like yes, okay. God, it kills me to say this. I put this record on. I forgot where it was. I forgot where it was. It's, I don't know. Well, I'll get to the tag in a minute, but I've got to do this first. I put this record on the other day, and it's the only time in 35 years I got an ovation before the song started. Now, they didn't pay me after I got done, but, 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 but seriously. Because everybody and their dog knows this record. That, that, that you owe me for that. 
But Beautiful Noise is a super, super tune. And for me, it has been extremely helpful for me. It's done a lot for me. All right? <coughs> Listen for songs like that. There are many. Okay? Particularly if you've got one that copied the original tune. Okay? If you've got one that copied the original, as with the Boogie Grass band thing, as with the Key Largo, where you try to keep it as close to the original as possible. Uh, listen. Well, here's another one. All right? If you've ever heard the pop record, if you've ever heard the pop record, you will know this song. Anybody know that? It's San Antonio Stroll. You know, Tanya Tucker sold jillions of them. All right? If you can find records like that, and I'm not just pumping a label. I'm not any of them, okay? The dancers recognize it. I mean, I'll promise, where is it? I took it out of my case because I finally called it again so much I put it away, Ernie. But you put, if you put on El Paso City, it won't play two bars. And the dancers are like, yes! You know? And because it's probably one of the more popular records that's ever been cut. And they know it. If you find something like that, use it, okay? And I'm almost out of here. Use is the word. Don't just do it. Use it. Use it. Now, <clears throat> I don't have the time to go through and go through all the, how you use this as an equalizer or the, or the special effects and all, but you can listen to a record and find something that you can use in there and put it to use. Uh, I'm just trying to give you a little bit of an idea of what to look for. Because we as record producers, I promise you, spend a lot of money, a lot of time talking to these musicians saying, put this little thing right here, okay? It, it's small point, just for an example, there's a song that Don cut a long time ago, and, and the day I got it, I, I don't know if I called him, I saw him, or whatever, I told him it's gorgeous. But he put, uh, Welcome to My World is the name of the tune. And he put some strings on the figures that I, to me, it's sacrilege to sing over the top of. And now, I don't prompt call a whole lot where you say, head square through, go forward, and then the first beat of the music, I shut up. But on that one, I do, because he's, I don't know how many strings you use, but they swell. And it's like, ah, yeah. And more of the dancers, you can see the dancers like, whew. They react. They react to stuff like that. It's just dynamite, okay? But you got to listen to it to hear it, okay? Now... Here's a tone tune here that I use. I never call this record unless it's the last record of the night because the tag is so good, okay? And it's a, good, it's a super tune, uh, and the tag is so good, and you can listen for other records. Now, these are just things that I use, but it by no means means you're limited to these tunes nor these labels. But this type of thing is what I'm trying to get across now. This is an, a typical example of finishing up a record. And I have no idea where I am because the lead on there wasn't strong enough that I can just drop a needle and find out. So, I, so I'm going to guess. But... There you go. Oh, is it one time around the road? Get home and swing the lead and go around and around the road. If you're finishing up a dance, you know, so you're often you're trying to come up with something you want to talk to them dancers about and say thank you and all that stuff. I got music, I got music, I got my girl who could ask for anything more. How man left with the corner. Swing your own. God bless, guys. Thank you all for coming now. Bye. That little thing that you can talk to them and they go, yeah. And what it does, it helps you with your professionalism. It helps you with giving that same aura of being a stage entertainer. And this is what the dancers would like for you to be anyway. Okay? They look up on that stage and they don't see a graying, balding, pot-bellied fella. They see an entertainer up there. And if you make them smile and you make them happy and you make them dance and you send them home feeling good, you win. And your music will help you more than anything to help you win. Thank you all.
Thank you, Wade. Wade talked about the uh, different rhythms, although the timing is the same. It brought to mind a record on hi-hat that um, if, if Ernie is around here, he'd probably know the number. On one side, Ernie put a sampler of different rhythms, but the same 129 beats, okay? But different, everything from a waltz to rock to the boom chuck. Uh, and on the other side, of course, is a hoedown. If you'd like to hear part of what Wade was talking about, the different rhythms in that, uh, go to one of the uh, record dealers over there and ask for a rhythm sampler on hi-hat, and I'm sorry I don't know the number. I'm sorry, what? Hi-hat 42? All right. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. It's called Marker 44. That's the name of it. It's, it's, it's uh, the hi-hat's yellow on a yellow label. But uh, it's very interesting how Ernie just decided to take the musicians and keep the same time and put these different uh, rhythms down. Um, one other thing that I wanted to say, that at the end we're going to have questions and answers. And what I want you to do, if you have a question for any of the panelists, for any of us, or any one of us who could answer it, we'd like to have you come up after uh, Don. And we want you to come up to that podium. We want you to give your name and where you're from. Our next panelist is um, 32 years. Yes. Well, that's, I was about, <laughs> I was about to say that Don probably will come up here and says, well, they did everything I had to say. <laughs> And uh, Wade uh, stuck me with five, six minutes I have to make up with. I thought for... Yep, for the first time in history. Let's have a nice hand for Wade on that one. This next caller has been in the business 32 years, and I don't know if I'm right or he, even if he knows it. Somebody gave me a record that was supposed to be Red Boots' first singing call called Herald or... Uh, Harold's Gas Station? Does that ring a bell? Was it? You mean I pay $200 for that for nothing? Well, I didn't pay for it, but I, I thought that was supposed to be the first one. Well, I stand corrected. Man's been in the business 32 years. I don't know if the label's been around that long, but Red Boot has been around a long time doing a lot of fine music. He has a group called the Red Boot Boys, who are still calling around. You can catch them, or I'm sure if you go up to him, he'll tell you where they're, where they're at. And also, he says to say, he's still alive. Let's have a nice hand for Don Williamson. Still alive. Did I say that? Okay, I'm filling in for Elmer. He was uh, supposed to be here, and I talked to uh, to George just, uh, I guess, two days ago, and I said, well, sure, I'll be glad to to uh, to help out because we're always interested in music. So these fellows have done a great job, and I'm just going to say two or three things. When I, in talking about music, I think this fits right into the theme so well, improving the dance experience. And I don't know if you're like me, but back there years ago, I got involved in choreography, which I'm a very, uh, everybody's always interested in that, and that's a big part of our programming. But uh, I got so involved in that in some of my advanced clubs, and I was doing a little challenge at the time and so on. I just kind of got away, even though I was recording, I kind of got away from, from what you can actually do with music. And uh, I think think I began at that point to get back to it and to rediscover those goodies that is in all of this music with just a little work and a little planning that we can get and just watch the dancer's response. Also, uh, if you will think in terms of watching a TV program or a movie or a Broadway play or I guess we could even talk about hospitals and dental offices and everything. What, what would it be without music? Uh, it'd be a pretty dull TV show without all those things that accents, the, uh, you know, uh, makes it come alive. And, and this is kind of what we're after. I used to do a little blurb on what I call psychology of music, and I would cover all of that. And I think, uh, I think 
that's it. We're really trying to reach these dancers and using our music as a, as a tool. Well, what kind of dancing would it be without music? Uh, I have come to the point where I do do a lot of teaching without music uh, because I have, that's another subject. But then I get it on in a hurry. But I guess I'd like to go back to a comment Manning Smith once said. Uh, when we're talking about the dancing experience, he was either saying it himself or quoting someone else in one of the old sets and order uh, issues. I forget now what year it was or when it was, but this is stuck with me. He says, one definition of dancing is the interpretation of music. And if you'll think of that, this is kind of what we're doing. We are interpreting uh, the music that we hear. And as Wade said, if you play a funeral march, that's what they're going to do out there. They're going to are going to go to sleep, or not. but if you want, if you're going to excite them, you're going to get a snappy piece of music, or if it's a holiday, you're going to select that record and everything. These are things that we've been over and over before. Please turn the tape over now for the continuation of the program. All the tools within that piece of music uh, that's going to be interesting to the dancers, and you know, and I know, if you're calling for the senior citizens you're going to kind of select a different program than you would if you call for the, uh, for the teenage group and so on and so forth. I'm going to just use three little records here, maybe four, play you a little bit of what I, I – th this could come under programming or caller charisma or entertainment. I think all of these things that they've already mentioned, it's very true. Uh, you're up there calling – it's your job to see that these folks have a good time, and you have all this good music. If you select it properly, uh, you want to you want to get that good response. So, what little what little things can you do to enhance your delivery or their dancing enjoyment of that? And these are just little things. I used to call this production numbers, and I still carry a little box within my briefcase called production numbers, and I try to get in at least one or two of those in all of my programs. I remember Wade and I were working somewhere, and Wade says, every one of mine's a production number, and that's, that's, I agree with that in a way, but still, there are a few things that, uh, the point is this, each of you have little songs that work best for you that maybe I couldn't do, or uh, it's, it's worked your dancers like it. Uh, they love it. They're going to ask for it. And you get sick of doing it, maybe. Uh, but uh, you need to not throw it away because the, what you want to do is get better and better and better. If it really works for you, keep that in that, in that uh, little box and, and use it. And uh, I suppose these are three that at the moment I would call in my production numbers or gimmicks that I get a lot of uh, mileage out of. And most any dance I'm calling for any age group, I can take these. And this is just a little thing. But I've grown to believe that these are the little things that makes that caller's personality. Uh, all of us uh, can't jump up here like Tony Oxendine. He, uh, he immediately has this charisma, you know, and this uh, attention and and everything. So some of us have to work on it. Some of us wear red boots and all kinds of things to enhance that a little bit, you know. But we can take this music and do little tricks with it. And if you're good at it, uh, uh, you can really enhance your program. I feel like I've had a little success at that. I've had lots of people to say, you know, I've kind of over the years become some sort, in my own way, an entertainer by using those things that I can do. And this is something. I heard the one of the Nationals, I don't know where it was, uh, three or four years ago, this is a record that uh, Kip Garvey, I don't know what's happened to Kip lately, but anyway, this this is a, I saw the guys do, and I really liked the record, got me a copy of it, and I really have a fun with it. I'm sure a lot of you have heard it. It's called Shake Like an Earthquake. It's a Ronnie Millsap tune that uh, one of the boys, Dan Norby, did. And here's the thing. 
If you haven't done it, you ought to get a hold of that record if it's still available. But, but here's what I do. It sets the record up. And I think just a little setup can do. What I do, I have the, uh, I'll tell the dancers to do this. Let me ask you to do this. You need to set up anyway because uh, uh, Verlin's about to go to sleep back there. I need to have him stand up. Everybody stand up and do this. Isn't this terrible? I'll say, all right, dancers. When I get to the part, I say, I need your help. I, uh, help me here on this record. And when I get to the part that says, shake your body down, I want you to do this. I said, look up here. Do that. All right, you all do that. Thank you. Sit down. You might say, he's silly. Well, maybe, but seriously, you get a lot of chuckles, a lot of laughs, and some of them back there in the squares will really cut you some didos. They'll twist it around good. And anyway, that's got a long intro on it, and uh, you got time to ask them to do that two times on the intro. And then this particular record, especially the first time through, as Wade said, I like to know what's in the record, too. It has some of the best little simple rock beat. It, something about it just grasps those dancers, and they love it, and I really have good success with it. And then when, first, after you get about midway through the record, they... You know, it begins to little little blase, and you have to jack them up a little bit. But anyway, this is one of my production numbers, and well, well, I'll let you sit, but I want you to help me. I'm going to call just uh, a little bit here. You got the. Everybody, shake your body down. One more time, shake your body down. You. Circle left. Really, baby, don't you know you set my soul to fire? Yeah, you don't think of you don't think of Don Williamson as being a uh, a rock and roll. Uh, Javi driving type caller, but you know I try to get into that character too sometimes, and I can really turn them on with that. And I think that little bit of setting the record up. A lot of times, if they're out there ratchet jawing, they're not going to really get these little things that you might be going to present. So you're up there showing out a little bit, or you're entertaining, and you want to do enough of that to get them to listen and get the best you have to offer. And that's one. That's a Eureka record. Shake your body down. Let's see. Tell them the number. You got your glasses. What's the matter? You can't see it? Over here. Eureka, 1801. I happen to like Ronnie Millsap off a well anyway. Uh, here's another one. This is a, 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 I, I do a little story. I don't think I talk too much. But uh, I, I like to set up some of This is a little, uh, on Chaparral, a little song called Cherokee Maiden. It's an Indian type, the Cherokee Indian. I, I take about three or four lines. I do have my great-great-grandmother was a full-blooded Cherokee Indian. I have a little of that uh, in my ancestry, and I, I try to get that out quickly, and I say the reason I'm, I'm going to, getting interested in this because they're letting the Indians have a... Uh, 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 the casinos, you know, and uh, gee, up there in Tennessee, they're they're uh, playing bingo for all kinds of money. They get by with all that stuff, just like they do in Vegas, you know. And anyway, I make a comment about that and say I'm going to get in on this. It's just something to call their attention that we've got some Indian stuff coming up. And then uh, when I weave the ring, I, I say, you, "We all uh, can y'all sound like an Indian?" Yeah, yeah. So let's, you guys here, let's go like an Indian. This group's not alive today. But anyway, uh, you get the gist. All right, I'm going to call the, <laughs> I'm going to call the opener here, Dog Blast It, and I want you to go like an Indian. All right. This music makes you think Tom Thompson Indians. Ladies, 
chain go straight across that ring. You roll away in circle right. Four ladies roll away in circle to the left. Left Allen man, weave the ring. Here we go. Now, you don't you don't want to do this kind of, if you want to call it foolishness, every tip uh, that to that extent. But I'm talking about places in your program where this kind of use of the song, I think you're getting everything out of it that it has in it. And this is what you want to do. And this is the reason I guess I call it production number, because I'm giving it all I got. And I get better the more I do it at handling those particular things. And I get Time and time again, they call for me to do it over again. And, you know, if you're calling for the same club quite a bit, you get a little bit uh, uh, tired of doing it. But then when you're on the road out there, you know, you really you really got this little bag of goodies where you can call on it any time that you're really, as uh, Tom said, uh, comfortable with it, and you have the confidence you can really sell it to the best of your ability. Uh, did, uh, can we answer questions now? Okay, he's... The boss, I guess. Okay. Uh, I've got some more here. I'll just use one more, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll close it out here. This is one that I recorded several years ago, and uh, uh, not a whole lot of people do it, I guess, but for some reason I got to hamming it up. It's a thing called Oklahoma. Uh, it's on Red Boot, and I keep saying I'm going to re-record it. I never have gotten around to it yet. Because uh, the, the music is just very adequate, I guess. But I sell it w with these gimmicks that I'm talking about, and uh, it needs better music. So I'm thinking about recording that thing uh, and getting it out there. But what I do, I, I have learned over the years uh, to say, now, this one I'm going to try to act like uh, uh, McCray. What's the singer? Gordon, Gordon McCray or Howard Keel, uh, and uh, I says I'll probably sound more like the baseball player McCray out there in Kansas City. But anyway, uh, I'm going to do it. Okay, they're listening to see if I can do it, you know. And then I get on here, and I really do. I over project here and do some of the things I should do more of when I'm singing anything, but uh, I overdo it. But it, this, I go all around the country, and when I, even when I'm traveling with the Red Boot Boys, they keep wanting me to do this, and I, I never have gotten the other guys to, to learn it. So, but it, anyway, it's it, it works, and uh, I never call it where Ron Libby is. If you've ever heard him call it, you'll understand why. Because he uh, he shouldn't be a square dance caller anyway. He should be doing something else. He can really do it. But anyway, I I, I get this out of it. I used to burst speakers. And here's where I get the most out of it. Circle left. Oh, 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 too much bass on it up here. But anyway, I get right close and, and really do it. And actually, people really think I can sing. I really put it out there, you know. And uh, it really works. And, and I, I've had an awful lot of people come and say, Oh, that wonderful voice, that wonderful voice. And, oh, I'll say, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. And I think I've, I've really pulled one over on them just a little bit. But anyway, for me, that's gimmick work. And I have other songs here. That, uh, th but I think you get the idea of what uh, I feel like is best. If you'll spend that much time on selecting your music and your songs that you can handle and get that little extra out of, you're going to be a way ahead of the game. And that's going to make you a little bit uh, a little bit better caller if you'll put that much time in on it. Uh, I'm going to skip down here. I've got one more. Am I? Okay. Uh, we have a little, uh, I, I, you, Jack, you guys, I know, but I didn't know this, but uh, over the years, uh, sometimes when you're recording music, or I've made a few mistakes over the years. I don't know if Wade ever made any or not, but 
Uh, there are so many things to think about. You have to arrange the song. You have to pick the key. You have to pick the instruments. You have to pick the rhythm. Are you going to do it in 2-4, 4-4, four, 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 shuffle, country? Are you going to... Uh, uh, there's just a number of things. And uh, what kind of intro? And do you want this kind of a tag? And uh, somebody that you're doing it for might have an idea that uh, might not be too sound, but you've got to work with that. And uh, There's just... Many decisions, if you make one of them wrong, you've hurt the sale of the record. Uh, one of the, one of the, in my experience, one of the worst things you can do is put a hard figure on it uh, if you don't want it to sell. Because we, your easy figures is what we got to put on there. Because these guys that call on the road and uh, your, your pros are going to, they're going to do what they want to anyway. You want that good music and that good structure, but uh, on the, uh, on the uh, on the figure, uh, it's for the guys that uh, that are going to do it like you do it. So you need to do a good job and keep it. Anyway, that's recording stuff. My point was this: I just learned this last year, and I'm going to be redoing some of my records. There is a way, and they're in the studio. And don't ask me to explain it to you. It has to do with the uh, limiters or something. We can take songs that have been recorded, and we can change the key, bring it up or down without varying the, the tempo. You know, you can speed something up, and it'll go up a little bit and down, but it don't do that. And I've done a couple of it, and, boy, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, it's a complicated uh, mathematical equation. Jack, can you explain that? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, uh, my son can do it, He and I just say, please raise this up one key or one and a and uh, so one song that I have recorded twice, and I missed it both times, is one of the greatest songs, in my opinion, that ever was, For the Good Times. Ray Price did it. And the last time I did it, I did it for uh, Drew Scarce, who had a good record. But he had kind of a low baritone voice, and uh, I got it low. It's uh, Wade probably would like that key. I don't know if he has that record or not, but it, it's a little low to be comfortable for a lot of callers. I'm going to redo that, bring that sucker up there where it's comfortable, and I'm going to enjoy calling it because I love that song because the music is great. It's just the key change uh, will help it. So that's just something that we now have to work with in the studio that we didn't have before. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Don. I just, uh, we'll get to the questions and all that. And like I said, I want you to go back there, give you your name and where you're from. I want to touch on a couple of things. First of all, when uh, Don said, shake your body down, you should have been back here and seen what we seen. There was a lot more shaking, and it kept going even when he stopped. Uh, <laughs> the other thing is, is that, uh, real quick, um, Wade talked about listening to the music all the way through, and, and it brought something to my, my mind, is that when you're listening to it and not saying a word, this is your chance to listen to the music and take it, literally take it apart. Take segments out and say, gosh, that sounds good. I'm going to do this kind of figure to it. Or as he said, gee, that's a nice pass, or what we call ear candy. Ear candy are those nice little guitar licks, piano licks that roll by, and sometimes we have a habit of stepping on them by saying, head square through, four hands go all the way around the ring. And if there's something nice in there, like Wade said, just say, head square through and let that ear candy go. Uh, that's something. So listen to the whole song, and, and you, you'll find things that you can fit your personality to. Uh, some of us aren't as lucky as a... Uh, Jack O'Leary of Silver Sounds, he puts his personality into it because he does all the music. So if he's feeling, oh, he's not here today. He left, didn't he? But uh, Jack puts all his personality in because he does the music. Uh, one more thing. Um, we're talking about getting attention. There is a song for the first time in 21 years of calling that got my attention. It's on quadrille. Take the ribbon from my hair. I'm only mentioning this for a reason. Because it was something different for me. When I put a record on, it goes by and then I make my, my choice. But 
I didn't know how to take this one. There were four bangs to it, like a shotgun. Bang, 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 bang. And before it ever got any further, I said, whoa, what the heck is this? I, put on, I did it three, four times. It really got my attention. It turned out, for me, to be a very good song. So you may want to take a listen to it. It gets your attention right off the bat. Now, I'm going to let it open to um, questions that anybody can answer. And there was a gentleman right down here in the uh, yellow sweater. You uh, look like you had a question. Okay, we still have time, so you know, we're, we're going to have to eat this time up. So you, questions, come on to the podium and ask anyone about music, about anything. Give your name and where you're from, please. Gordy Zeman from Cedarburg, Wisconsin. I have more comment than question. The first, as long as we have record producers up on the stage, one of the things that really sticks in my craw, and it bothers me when I see it, is I buy the record, and I see a little note on the bottom, for additional lyrics, listen to the called side. What's the big deal of putting the words, the, all the words that we could use on the, on the sheet of paper? I mean, well, any... okay. Um, did you all hear his question? Okay. I, I have a reason, but we're going to start out. Would you like uh, Wade first? Thank you. Do you own a copy of The Rose? I put all the lyrics on that one. Use your magnifying glass. Read it. This is the only reason, really, why I have the words. But sometimes if we put them all, the print is so doggone small that you can't read. Now, granted, perhaps we could do an insert and go to that. Um, I don't know whether you want to call it laziness or uh, and maybe that's what it is. But, God, I hate to stuff those things. That's why I use full color, full sleeves. But this is normally the reason, you know, you know or, and I'll tell you something, something else that happens sometimes. We'll go in and we'll cut the record, and somewhere between the time of, that we cut the tune and the time we get ready to do that cue sheet, our sample record has grown legs and has walked away somewhere, and we didn't write down all those other verses. For the most part, except for the size of the print on the sheet, oversight, I would love to give you a better answer than that, but I can't. But normally, I know in my case, it's because it would make the print so small that it's hard to read. That, that's the majority of the reasons. One, one other way, too, is that sometimes we try to get ahead of the gun and print the cue sheets and then go in and it's changed. And all the cue sheets are already printed up. And it's a matter of economics at that point. Uh, that's happened once or twice to me. Anybody else? Well, this is one of the things we are going to work on is try to improve our, our cue sheets so that they, the phrasing matches what actually goes with the record, and maybe this is something else we need to discuss also. Mm -hmm. One more. That, that is probably, uh, I used to be deep into uh, shucks for records, and for, uh, uh, I even used to print, Colors, pictures on the labels, and all these ego things, and then it, over the years, it just, I discovered that didn't mean a whole lot when it came to where that record was good. So, but that's the reason that I stopped doing it is so I could put, and I think <laughs> we're putting them all on there uh, anymore. But uh, as Wade said, if you're going to have shucks, you about, but it's still too small. You talk about now. We here's the first thing I do when even now when I get a. Uh, a record from Wade or uh, any of these guys that use shucks, Royal, Chaparral, you can't see. I've got a copy machine that blows that sucker up, and you talk about big copies. When I take it out to the dance, sure. I put it to where I can can see it. And that's the thing about it. A cue sheet is for use, and, uh, to, and uh, I, I agree with you. We should put that on there. Everything I guess, I guess on there. An alternative would be to put some extra words on the back, and that's extra work too. So, on the back, yeah. or or stuff. Of course, that calls. I know why we do it. You, somebody else stuffs it for you. But I also had some problems years ago with that. They were. I would get uh, uh, get in a thousand records, and seven hundred would have the right cue sheet, and some of them would have gospel music or rock and roll or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I went to stuff in my own. Uh, cue sheets. One more comment on cue sheets. Uh, some of us don't do a good job in, in metering uh, to, uh, the, the eight-beat phrases out through there. There are some producers, I won't mention, 
who we are, but we'll start writing, and they just write. And, and, and the phrase will end right here in the middle, and I have to go through there and make a comma here and, and analyze it before I can find out wh- mm-hmm. where it is. And uh, so cue sheets need a little more attention. I can sympathize with you there. Uh, uh, Tom, did you have anything to add to that? <laughs> yeah, just a couple of comments. I don't know why this happens with these guys. Uh, we don't do it. We always put all the words on the cue sheet. <laughs> but uh, I think it's important. There's something uh, that goes beyond. I agree with you what you're saying on that. Uh, and it would be good to have all of those words on at all the times. But beyond that, I think it's important that you use that not as a cue sheet but as a learning tool and that you work on that record and you have those words down. If you you choose to use those extra words, fine. Or if you choose not to use them, fine. But the important thing is to get in that comfort zone and give yourself the confidence that you don't even need to look at it or think of it as a cue sheet, but just as a learning tool. But I agree with you. We need to have all the words. Just recently, come to think of it, I have a couple of very conscientious callers on the label, and one of them, or two of them, they did their own cue sheets because they don't trust me. That's say Mr. Kurt Braffitt and Brad Carter. And believe me, they put all the words on the songs they did. And if they had sneezed on the one side, you'd have seen that on the cue sheets too. So maybe we should let the callers handle them sometimes. They'll get everything on there. Okay, I, I have another uh, more or less of a statement. Uh, it kind of ties in with each of their speakers use and to enhance our music, to have our comfort zone, and also to the fact that people are looking up to the caller. I guess uh, I can relate. I did a, a singing call at a dance once. I went as a dancer, but they asked me to do a singing call. I did a, thought I did a pretty good job at it. And uh, a lady came up to me and said, uh, Boy, you did a nice job, but I don't think that the words of that song were quite appropriate. And I think we as callers kind of have to be sensitive that we don't want to get like the rest of the world with our, uh, our content of music, of what words we're using, what type of music, that we should really you know, have music that, it, that enhances square dancing and not tears it down like the rest of the world. There's a lot of bad music out there. I totally agree. Totally. As a matter of fact, we have a song coming out in the next couple of weeks, which I was hoping was going to be out here. But it demonstrates exactly that, but it also shows the versatility that you can be done. Uh, Tim Mariner is cutting a Garth Brooks tune, and it's called Friends in Low Places. And the original uh, lyric is, I've got friends in low places where the whiskey drowners and the beer chases my blues away. And uh, so he said, I've got friends in low places where the music's loud and the cheer chases my blues away. You get the steel, you get the same idea, whatever. If you're back at your home club among your close friends and you want to use the original lyrics, I suppose you can. But if that offends you or offends your dancers or you wish to change it, we at least do not waste a good song by putting in bad lyrics. I totally agree. Okay, yeah, I just want to add to that. We also did a song called Cheap Love. We changed it to Sweet Love because it was a good piece of music. Yes, one of the things that's connected with the, the comfort zone and taking a piece of music and turning it into something that's uniquely yours, what I'll do frequently is I'll go back to the original uh, pop release of a song and get all of the original lyrics, which may or may not all have been used on the singing call, and put them in in my own unique combination so that song is, is mine. Like with the Mississippi Squirrel, I went back to Ray Stevens and I took a lot of his original lyrics that weren't on the uh, the Blue Star, that weren't on the, the uh, sheet and put them in there so that that song is mine and nobody else's because nobody does it the same way. Yeah, that's, that's very good. That's putting your personality into a song any way you can. Taking it apart, putting words into it just like he said. Uh, it, it, things do slip by us. Uh, I did the St. Louis um, Festival last weekend and the first time in my life, and I never thought it was a bad song, as somebody applauded, watched the words. I did a song called Black Velvet, a new religion that will bring you to your knees. I just, you know, somebody came up and said they protested me doing that song, 
I did it very well, she said, but protested it because it had black magic in it and talked about another religion. Uh, uh, probably I will put that song away. If it's going to offend one person, I, you got to kind of watch it. And uh, it just never dawned to me that that would offend somebody. So sometimes we do a song and we sing it as a musician, we sing it as a producer, and we don't pay attention to the words, more to the music than anything else. And that's our fault. Anybody else want to touch on that? Just one thing on uh, what you were saying about making the song yours. I think it's extremely important, and important to the point that not only you go back and pick up the words from the original song and put them in as you see fit, but if the song starts with uh, Four Ladies Promenade or the song starts with Ladies Chain Over and Back and you happen to like to sing the first two lines, fine. Start it with Circle F and you sing the first two lines. It's your song and it becomes you. And as long as you're comfortable and happy doing that, you're going to be a better entertainer for it and the people are going to have more fun. We have seven minutes, and we, any other, uh, any question at all on the music, or uh, the thing that I think we as panelists up here like is the fact that you give us ideas, and without that help, uh, somebody asked me about why we don't put key changes down, so I'm going to start a problem. Uh, they said when they look at a record that sometimes it says music interlude on it, but never lets them know when there's a key change. Do we have a reason for that? In fact, I was asked that today. I think I may start doing that. Don? I didn't get what you said. Was I too fast for you? <laughs> no. Somebody said when they get the cue sheet, they asked why we didn't put tell them there's a, cue, uh, a, a key change or a modulation. Why don't producers do that on the cue sheet? So when they see the record, they know it. Well, first of all, I would have said listen to the whole song like we always talk about but maybe they have a point Don you want to start on that I don't know that's just something we I haven't done uh, I'm not opposed to it uh, if the, if they put it on there and listen to it they're going to discover it but uh, I'm not opposed to it if I mean if that's something that would help I, I can sock it on there because I do I, I'm coming out with one in a couple weeks it's got one right in the middle break. Well, as, as we said, we say, tell you, listen to the whole song, but maybe uh, we should do that. I, 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 well, it's cause there's a couple of things involved with that more than you would think. First of all, when I listen to a record, even one of ours, it comes back from the pleasant plant. I always listen to the beginning and end, make sure it starts well and ends well. And if I get any kind of new record and I put it on, I think, oh, this is kind of neat. Well, I'm going to listen to it all the way through. I really and truly am. If for some reason I don't have time, and I'm not going to lie, sometimes I don't have time, I listen to it and think, this now is neat. I'll stick it over in the middle someplace. Not the same thing. Then I put it on the end. If it, the key is different, I know that thing is going to modulate. And before I call it, I want to see how it's going to modulate. You have... You have cued modulations and you have blind modulations, and we all love blind modulations, don't we, guys? Where it's going da 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 there it goes. It's all. All right. Uh, but also, if we put modulation, you've got some that know what, the, what it is and some that don't. Do we put half step modulation? Do we put full step modulation? Well, we will take it under advisement. How's that? Is that pretty good? We will take that under advisement because I really can't tell you why we don't indicate on there. If there is a negative side to it, it's this. Uh, we used to get comments all the time at these uh, meetings we'd have around here, and why don't you put the the key on the record? It says, "Boy, I can call those things good when they're in a key of G or when they're in a key of A, but I can't, I can't handle them songs up there in in, uh, in the next key." Uh, and uh, we keep saying that you know it's not the key; it's the melody line. 
and this is something we talk in caller schools, one key, one song in the key of G may be high, another song may be low. It's the melody line, and it's not the key. And we used to mislead callers. They, I can't, I'm not going to get that. I'm not going because it's in, not my key. Well, there's no such thing as my key. It's the song and the range. And uh, with that, I don't know if modulation would, would scare any of them off from buying the record or not. I'll make one more comment here while I've got the mic. Uh, since we were talking about the question he brought up, it's on uh, gospel music. Uh, years ago, I've always been was raised in the church and had my own convictions and everything and beliefs. Uh, I used to steer away from gospel music an awful lot, but I have such a background in Southern gospel and, and, and to, that uh, I have changed my mind over the years. I do not hesitate to use now a song, an old uh, gospel like I Saw the Light on Royal or things like that. And I think if uh, one caller from California said, well, these people are ashamed of their... Uh, religion. I mean, he took that approach, and really, uh, some of the denominations uh, get excited and everything, and there's nothing wrong with that if that's your style of worship. So I don't hesitate to call gospel songs because, to me, that can be a way of your expression, and it very, very well may be some positive things on it. Uh, uh, and uh, there is one uh, that's been done recently that I have a a problem with. <laughs> I don't know why the difference is, but it's a real good one. So uh, I just haven't been able to, for something about it, it's a real old good church song. And it's, for some reason, it's, it, I still may call it, but I haven't, I haven't done it yet. Huh? When the roll is called a <laughs> Uh It's a great, one of the best songs this ever was. And I just, I'm probably going to do it, and when I do it, I'll probably get a good response. But uh, again, I remember in years past, we used to have some people come up would rough would pull your hair out if you do that because it offended them. And if such a song does offend someone, perhaps we should choose not to use it on that night. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, and when I first got into it, to the record producing for Square Dancing, there were certain rules they didn't tell me about. And this uh, we're talking. Ten years ago, and one of them was "Do Not Do a Religious Song." I took one called "I'm Ready to Go," and I did it, not knowing the, the rules at that time that it was a religious song. It had "Hallelujah" in it, and also there wasn't supposed to have harmony on it. I had all the taboos, but yet that happens to be one of the biggest sellers I have. So it's unexplained. But like Don said, I trying to learn to stay away from those kind of things now. Well, one more thing, because we have a couple minutes. And uh, Wade talked about listening to the front and the back of a piece of music. And, the, and, and I wanted to stress the importance of listening to a whole piece of music. There's a song uh, called Most of All. And if you listen to the opener, especially the first half of it, it is kind of really laid back with a, a boom chuck. And I have seen callers listen to a part of a song and go, that, that'll never work. That'll still never work. 